here we go. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, so just an introduction to who I am. Uh, I'm Siobhan. I did a, 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 bachelor's of, uh, a bachelor's degree in science in Trinity College, um, and I did a master's in uh, breast cancer research at RCSI. It was after my master's where I then kind of joined the Information Lab Ireland as a data consultant, and I've learned a uh, load on Tableau and Alteryx since then. Uh, I'm definitely, I just want to say before we go on that I'm I'm not as like, I'm not like our, our lovely Tableau Jedi guests like Daniel Ling or Lorna Brown. I'd say I'm like a, I'm the equivalent of a baby Yoda, so I'm still learning, but hopefully I don't underwhelm you with these tips. Uh, okay, so my first three tips are kind of just to do with uh, quick ways of how you can connect data in Tableau. Uh, so hopefully we all know how to connect data in Tableau. You just kind of click on the icon here and connect to a file or else you can connect to, uh, click on the new data source on the plus icon there. But you actually don't need to connect to a file to actually read in data in Tableau. There's, you can actually copy and paste data into your workbooks. So let's say I wanted to copy and paste this um, population by country table into my workbook. So I don't have to download the file or copy it into a spreadsheet and read it into the workbook. And I can just simply copy it there and control V, control C, control V, and I can paste it in there. So there you go. Um, and I can just do a quick like a little uh, heat map of Ireland if I want by uh, heat map of the population of Ireland. So annoyingly, the county field isn't uh, Tableau interprets it as a as a as a I think as a as a county, but it should um, should well should be county, but it's it interprets it as a province for some re weird reason. But um, yeah, I can do a quick heat map of Ireland like that. So just to show you, you don't need to read in your data by connecting the file. You can actually just copy and paste it in there, which I didn't know. And um, so tip number two is, yeah, so you can copy data into your workbook, but you can also copy sheets and dashboards from workbook to workbook. So this is what I do all the time if I'm working on another workbook and I don't want to have to recreate this sheet again. I can just copy it, open a new workbook and then paste it in there. And along with that, you'll see that it also brings in the, uh, the data source there as well um, for that. And yeah, so that's my tip number two. Tip number three is, yeah, so you can actually import data sources from other workbooks. So has anyone ever given you a packaged workbook with lots of different sheets and dashboards, but you're only really interested in using the data source and you want to create your own visualizations in a fresh new workbook? Uh, so a quick way of how you can actually bring in that data is, you can actually connect to a Tableau workbook by connecting to that as a file and then reading in their data sources. So conveniently, I have a workbook here that has lots of different data sources. So if this was someone's packaged workbook they sent to me and I just want to kind of read in the data that they were using, I can just connect to their, um, let's say the music data, I can just connect to it like that. That's just a quick tip on how to just connect to data sources there. Uh, so hopefully it'll be, I'll get more, uh, more fun with some tips later on. But um, so summary stats card, so yeah, um, so some Tableau kind of summarizes your data in lots of different ways. You can uh, you can sum, you can average, you can do median. Um, but have you ever like wondered where is there like a summary display of these numbers in your in your in Tableau? Um, so you can actually if you just right click on the canvas and you go to summary, you can actually show the uh, the summary card there. So this shows the, the count, so the number of uh, um, kind of members within subcategory, the average, the minimum, the max, the median. And if that's not enough for you, you can also then just uh, choose to add in more. You can look at standard deviation, first quarter, skewness, excess kurtosis. Okay, so tip number five. Okay, so has this ever happened to you where someone's given you a workbook and there's an issue with it, but they're rolling off into another project. So they're just asking you to troubleshoot it. You deal with it. See ya, I'm off. So what do you do then? So what's the best thing you should do? So I normally, if I'm, when I'm panicking and I'm having an anxiety attack is I go to my worksheet and I go to the describe sheet. So this kind of gives you sort of a, a documentation of what's, how this work, how this sheet was created. And so it kind of gives you kind of what the mark type was, what's in the rows and the columns, uh, what kind of members are in the dimensions that you're using. But the best thing about this is that it kind of shows you all the calculations that are being used and the formulas as well, which is, I think is really useful so that you don't have to right click and edit the pill and look at all those calculations. You can have a kind of a cohesive view in one documentation. Um, so that's something I always do. It's a good way to start your troubleshooting process um, whenever you're, someone's handed you over this monstrosity or whatever it is that they've given you. Um, okay, so this is something that was boggling me for a while where whenever you're when you created a workbook and you're creating an extract, sometimes Tableau asks you, where do you want to save the extract? And then sometimes it doesn't. And that used to always 
mind boggle me. Uh, so it's to do with the, the, the file type that you saved it as. So if you saved your workbook as a TWB file um, to, and you make an extract, Tableau will, uh, will ask you where you want to save the extract. But if you saved it as a TWBX file, and because it's a packaged workbook, it's going to package the extract within the workbook. So just to show you what I mean there, if I save this workbook as a, a TWB file, okay, click save. Yeah. And then let's say I want to make an extract out of the, the coffee chain. So I'll just right-click on this, give it a chance just to, just to save there. And don't do this to me, Tableau, of all the days not to respond. Give it a second. There we go. Um, extract that and it'll give you a pop-up box it's just how do you want to save the extract I'm just going to click extract there and then that you'll see that it asks me where do I want to save the extract but and you can see there it's changed into an extract but if I save it as a TWBX file instead so just change it into a TWBX save that give it a second to not respond and make me panic okay great yeah there we go Come on, it's eating into my precious 15 minutes time. Let's give it a second there. Uh, yeah, and then you can see I, if I create an extract now of one of these data sources, give me a pop-up box, but then there's no dialogue box of uh, Tableau asking me where I want to save the extract because it's a package workbook now. Okay, and if you do want to know where this, the extract is saved to, you can just go to right-click on that properties and it'll show you there where it was saved. So normally it's in a temp folder somewhere, but just, in, just if you want to know that. Okay. So tip number seven. So this is to do with uh, Tableau's default behavior of putting the labels at the bottom uh, whenever you have a vertical axis. Um, so you can actually change this to have the labels to the top. Like let's say if you just have your own preference or you find that someone might find it harder to read the labels at the bottom, whatever, whatever you feel. Uh, so you can actually move them to the top by going to analysis, table layout, and within advance, you can change that to labels to the top by just unchecking show innermost label at the bottom of view when there's a vertical axis. So if I just uncheck that there, you can see I've moved them to the top. Okay, so tip number eight. So yeah, so I'm assuming someone must have sent you a workbook before and you might have seen that they might have had like three or four different fonts going on and lots of different colors. You'll, you'll always meet someone who has that kind of way of designing their dashboards. I say me at the start before I joined the information lab. Um, but if you just want to kind of strip it right back down to the to the like the very basics, but you're not too sure kind of what changes have been made to the dash to the sheet, uh, a quick tip of formatting: if you right click on that uh, category there, format, it'll bring you up the formatting pane, and you'll see that anything that's in sort of bold is basically not the default. So you can see I've changed. It's telling me that someone's changed the script MP bold. So if I just want to bring it back to normal, I can just right click, clear that. Same if I go to, let's say, the background, you can see worksheet is bold there. So that means that's been changed by somebody. I can just clear that. Same with the header, that's bold. I can change that and bring that back to normal. And I can bring subcategory. You can see the font and alignment is bold there. So just know that if it's, it's bold, it means that it's not the default and you can change it. Okay. Okay, clear sheet quickly. So yeah, this is just a very simple one where if let's say there's no saving this sheet and you just want to get rid of it, you don't want to see it anymore. You can actually clear the sheet quickly by just clicking on this uh, icon up here. So if I just clear sheet, you can just get rid of it quickly. That's just another quick tip on that. Um, so I showed you how to format the uh, a sheet and um, kind of format it at a sheet level, but um, you might be dealing with lots of different sheets on um, in a dashboard that have lots of different fonts going on. Some are italicized, some are bold, and you're just, you're not happy with it. Um, so you don't wanna have to go into each individual sheet to make those changes though. So you can actually go to the format up here and you can change it at a dashboard level. So that'll just change, change kind of the formatting within on the sheets within the dashboard or else you can change it to all the sheets within the workbook. And um, so this is what I normally always do at the very end when I'm kind of sending it off to somebody and I just want to standardize everything. So if I want to make all these titles the same, I can go to worksheet titles. I can make them all trebuchet or trebuchet, whatever you call that. Uh, make it, make them all size 12. Make them all, maybe make them all bold and unitalicize some of them. Okay, and same with the, uh, there we 
there we go. Same with the actual um, the formatting on the worksheet. I can actually do that as well. So if I want to change some of these are like different fonts, I can come here and set them at the worksheet level as well. I can just change it to 10. Yeah, make them all 10 and unbold some of them there. And there you go. So that's just a quick thing there. Um, right. Uh, a bar and bar chart. So this is something that a lot of people always ask me, how do you build? Because it's not typically, it's not in your, um, it's not out of your box in the show me that Tableau has here. And um, so these are great if you want to kind of compare one measure against another uh, for a particular KPI. Let's say you want to compare um, 2017 sales versus 2018 sales. So I already have a calculated field that just pulls out um, sales if the order date is 2017. And I've done that for 2018 as well. So if I just bring 2018 into columns and I want to look at this for subcategory or category, I'll say. OK, and just another quick tip here um, is if you don't like the orientation, if you've, if you've accidentally put the pills in the wrong shelves, you can actually just like swap these, swap these around if you want. So that's just another uh, little mini tip in there. But I'm just going to keep it on the uh, on a horizontal axis. So just make that entire view. And then if I just bring in my 2018 sales into over the axis. So that'll just make it a combined axis there. Oh, it seemed to work there. Let's drop it on. Oh, I had 2018 sales. My bad. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on there. Um, yeah, so that'll give you a side-by-side -side bar chart there. So I'm looking at 2017 and 2018 for furniture. I can then just bring measure names into, uh, into the size or into, into color. And that'll give me stacked marks. If I go to analysis, stack marks, and turn them off. And then if I just duplicate measure names into the size, I then get my nice bar and bar chart there. Um, and if I wanted to make like the 2018 the smaller kind of little bar, bar instead of the big one, I can just move this up here like this. And there you go. So you've got a nice little bar and bar chart there. OK, so tip number 12, uh, replacing references. So this is to do with. Um, if you're ever replacing your data source as an old data source with a new one and your tableau doesn't like it and you know everything breaks and you're wondering like why is my life terrible and you just don't want to be there well a really great way of how you can get around that is a replace references and um, so if, let's say if i come to my profit analysis dashboard you can see i've got um, a view of profit in all of the different sheets and um, so profit is being used as a field in these sheets and um, but if i actually let's say your enterprise wants to rename profit to earnings instead and let's so if I come to the data source that's feeding into this workbook so this is the field profit if I change this to earnings I'm going to break my dashboard because that's what I want to do because I'm sinister like that so if I go to yeah if I change that and I refresh the dashboard now you can see I've broken my dashboard so if I go to there all of those sheets are broken and so you don't need to panic though so what you can do is you know, it's a lot of work, but you could replace the, the profit pill that you used with the new renamed field. Um, and that would take a while if you had loads of different sheets um, being fed in by that pill. And you might think, oh, well, maybe you could delete the profit pill and rename earnings to profit. And that might work. That might do the job. Uh, and if you're thinking that, unfortunately, that won't work for you. And things, Tableau won't like that. So to get around that is if you replace references. So if I go back to undo to where I saw the exclamation mark, a profit. So you can see Tableau is just telling me it doesn't exist anymore in the database because I've renamed it. So if I just right click on that and I say replace references and I tell Tableau that I want to replace all instances of profits with, with earnings instead. So I click OK. You can now see that's just a quick way of just recovering your, your um, all your views there. OK. Um, so if you want to add a bit more context to your dashboards, let's say you want to add like a header here. You don't want to add a header, but you just want a little small kind of option for somebody to hover over for information on your dashboards. You can add a little info button. So a really quick way to, to create an info button is just creating a calculated field. And um, I always just have it just as a, an empty string. You can have whatever you like in there, though. Just call it info button. Click OK. And then throw this into the detail marks card and change it to shape. Uh, entire view. And then you can customize your shape so it doesn't have to be a circle. I can tell Tableau I want it to be kind of whatever Tableau default shapes they give me. Uh, so if you go into your um, into your documents, 
you'll have a folder called My Topic Repository. And within there, you'll have a Shapes folder. So you'll notice that these folders here correspond to what is in my, my drop down uh, select shape palette here. So these are those shapes there. And so I've already created, so you can create your own folder and customize kind of your own images and add them into the folder. And then that will feed into Tableau. So I've already created this uh, icon here for an information button. And there we go. So what I can do is then just have a little like add to my tooltip and say this is a report on dot 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 and kind of add whatever I need. You can add in, you know, profit, sales and just kind of give a report on that and just throw that into your dashboard. So I just might quickly find it there, maybe make it just floating so that I don't have to reposition this. But there you go. You can add it in as a little info button in your in your dashboard. Quite small there, but there you go. You can add it in there and someone can hover over it and get more information on. On the dashboard. Okay, sorry, I'm flying through this, so it might not be the best formatting there, but gotten to the end. And um, so, tip number fourteen. Okay, so yeah, so this is where you can enhance your visualizations with Unicode. So I've got um, a number of different coffee brands where I'm looking at their profit versus their target profit, um, and you can see there I've colored by those those that didn't meet their targets. They're colored red, and those that did are, are gray. And um, but I can also kind of reinforce the kind of the color here with some. Um, Kind of, I've got the percentage difference here of you know between the profit, those up, uh, the profit and the target and the profit and their target profits, and um, but you can kind of you can't really make out kind of the negative symbol or the plus symbol. So if you kind of want to enhance your visualizations with uh, kind of maybe having something more obvious for the negative symbol, uh, you can do that by replacing that with some kind of Unicode. So if I go to this uh, measure here that I've so it's just percentage difference and I go to format, you can see here I've changed it. I've, I've customized it to just be this kind of formatting here. But what I can do is I can add some symbols to replace the minus and the plus sign. So if I just do a semicolon and I just paste this here. So let's say if I want to put, I don't know, for a question mark for a negative sign and I want to put in a, an and sign. Now you might be thinking, what in God's name? Why is she doing that? Well, you can actually take advantage of that kind of custom formatting by going into finding some kind of suitable kind of shapes you might want to have instead. So I might want to have an up arrow for the uh, for the positive sign, so if I replace just the the question mark with an up arrow, and if I then go and I find another down arrow for the for the negative sign, okay, so you can do something like that. Or else, if you want to kind of add a bit more, kind of make it a little bit more fun, you can might be able to add something like I don't know a uh, you might want to add a skull instead of a instead of a negative sign. So if I go here, so you can do whatever you like. You just you can just customize it here though. I just do that properly there. So yeah, whatever you like, you can customize the Unicodes. Okay, uh, my last tip here is just resetting the filters on your dashboard. And um, so I'm sure you've had a couple of dashboards where you might've had four or five different filters acting on it. Uh, so this just shows profit by subcategory, region and ship mode. So if I, let's say, only want to look at a couple of, let's say subcategories and maybe two type of ship modes and maybe two types of region there. Annoyingly, if I then want to return all those values and reset it, I have to click all for these filters, which can be a bit of a pain if you have lots of different filters. So it would be better if you had just a single button that if you click it, it would reset all of your filters, which you can do. So if you go to worksheet, new worksheet, very like similar to creating the info button, if I just create the calculated field and just make it, um, whoops, make it just an empty string, and call that uh, reset filters, whatever, whatever you like prefer, doesn't matter. Throw that into the detail marks card. Again, create some kind of shape that is, you know, you like that you want to, you know, use. I might just use something I've created already, which is just my, um, I have reset filters, the reset kind of icon there. And I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And that should expand and then come back to my dashboard. And I'm just going to bring that in as a view. I might just call this a uh, sheet reset and throw that into make it tiled, not floating there. Hide the title there. Now, what I want to do is I want to click on this. So I'll just, again, choose a few example ones where someone's drilled down into a few um, members. And I want to click on this button and it will reset all those filters for me rather than me having to click all in the filter pane. So if I go, to, you have to do a dashboard action to set this up. So if I go to dashboard actions, add an action filter. So I want to uncheck uh, everything but 
the reset sheet that I created um, as my source sheet. And so, and also my mistake there as well, I need to make sure that I've created the reset button from the data, same data source that these sheets are being coming from. So I actually should be having this, not from the clipboard. I will just, another quick tip is if you want to copy calculated fields over to different dashboards, you can do that. So if I copy that reset kind of calculated field I did there, I can copy it across there and just add it in here instead. There we go. Uh, there we go. Coming back to this. Great. Now I can actually set up my action there. Um, add a filter. And I want to just, yeah, have my reset button as my source, as my source sheet. I want the run action to be select. And then I want my target sheets to be um, all the sheets that can be where their filters can be resettable. So that's going to be my profit by region, ship mode, and subcategory. So then I just want to set this up by setting target filters to add filter. And what are the fields I want to reset? So I want to be region, click OK. I also want it to be for um, ship mode as well. So find ship mode and subcategory as well. So if I go to subcategory, click OK. And don't mind this uh, missing fields on reset. Um, you can just ignore that. Click OK. And then moment of truth, if I try to click on this now, it should reset all the filters for me. OK, so that's my 15 tips. Hopefully I did it in 15 minutes and I didn't bore you. So I'll, um, yeah. Um, do we have time for any questions or? We just uh, jump? Oh, oh my God. OK, so uh, <laughs> just uh, brilliant. OK, my, my video, unfortunately, has failed to start. So I'll have to look at that again, but you can hear my voice. So that's all you, that's all you need for now. Uh, yeah, I totally blown away uh, by that, uh, to be honest with you. Um, you. It was 19 minutes. Well done. Right. And you had a few glitches, you know, Tableau didn't work for you. So we're going to take at least four minutes off for that. So well done. You got it done in, in 15 minutes brilliantly. Uh, and uh, I think either way, the quality uh, of what you delivered there was just off the charts. I, I have uh, uh, Greg Blackshields in the corner of my eye here, and I don't think he's, I'm stopping here for a minute so that he can stop writing as well for a minute. Uh, he was taking down notes there uh, and, and uh, we, he, he seems to have got an awful lot out of that, which is absolutely what it's all about and absolutely fantastic. Uh, the feedback, brilliant, Siobhan, great, thank you. That was epic. Um, uh, you know, I, wow, uh, one of is another thing. Um, the two things that I'm going to say, I really like the information icon. I thought that was lovely, little touch, and the filter reset is fantastic, okay? That's just brilliant. And um, Katie Kilroy says the same there, and, and I really like that. Uh, some great stuff there. Look, we do have time for a few questions. I mean, we, we're, we're, we're doing grand for time. So there was one question from Amir. Uh, how did you manage to write uh, kilometers squared on the data on the data pane? Not not sure what he means by that. Maybe kilometer squared on the data pane. Um, kilometer. I'm not too sure actually on that question. The kilometer okay. squared. Um, in your presentation, I think. If that helps. Kilometer squared. I don't um, remember coming across kilometers. Um, no worries. We we we'll get some clarification uh, from it. Um, just while you're looking for that, there, uh, Louise Shorten, <laughs> clap clap. Well done, Siobhan. Uh, just for clarification, it will be recorded. All of these sessions are recorded. And then basically um, what I ah. always say is uh, for people to follow the information lab on LinkedIn and we post the recording there. But we'll probably send it in a, in a thank you follow up uh, as well. OK, um, to, to everybody who has attended. All right. Um, but do follow the, the information lab Ireland on LinkedIn and you'll, you'll see it there as well as pictures and screenshots that will repost that we will post later. Um, just to okay. answer that question, I yes. whoever pointed that out on size kilometer squared. Yeah, that, that's it there. Uh, I just, I, this is just an example um, data source I grabbed online. I just like, this is just an example um, table that I've copied over. But if, um, if your question was just to rename it or just to like, um, was that kind of, it's just, it, this came from this table here just for, yeah. for so it, it, question. It, it, it went in by default then. Yeah. 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 Grand. Okay. So the other one then, uh, any way to set defaults for every workbook you open? So I don't need to set the format every time I open a new one. Um, well, if you just save it as, you'll always have to reform it. The default will always be the Tableau book and the Tableau, like that'll just always be the default. So um, I don't think so. You will always have to, at the start, just reset it uh, at the workbook level 
Um, okay. And then it'll save it and it'll always stay at that, form, at, that, at that font. Okay, so Dan, do you want to jump in there? You, 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 you were saying something about that, I think, Daniel Ling. Oh yeah, you could, um, in an organization, you could create a kind of template or um, design standard on Tableau Server and get people to download from there and then start their workbooks from, from that with kind of formatting pre-built in. Might save a little bit of custom formatting each time. Cool in the gang, uh, brilliant, okay. And uh, just one final comment then, very cool, Siobhan. Users love the up and down arrows for positive and negative, and it's very true indeed. Um, so listen, Siobhan, um, and if, if there's no further questions from people, I, I'm gonna let Siobhan just kind of, uh, uh, just sort of chill and, and calm after that. Uh, I'll just drink my, my cup of water now. Just yeah, yeah, absolutely, my... yeah, yeah, brilliant. And, and Siobhan, sincere thanks, it was absolutely fantastic. and. Uh, there was some uh, nice funny moments in there as well, which is, is always makes it very special. You're great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having lot. me. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to pass it over then to Daniel Ling and uh, I'll give him a brief introduction if I may. Uh, so Daniel has been with the Information Lab. I know this one for sure. Uh, it's since August of 2018. Um, okay. And I remember we had been sort of in touch a little bit, I think, because I'd seen some of Dan's work on Tableau Public. And luckily... Uh, I got a message from him back in August of 2018 from Twitter, just before, the day before going on my holidays, if I remember correctly, which I sent on to Dave Hackett. And then when I came back from my holidays, we had hired Dan, which worked out great uh, because it meant that I had someone who I could, um, when I was writing various different how-to blogs for the information lab and that kind of thing, someone that I could feed back to and who would give me advice and who would kind of mentor me and uh, that kind of thing. So from a personal point of view, Dan has always been great uh, at helping me uh, with, with any problems that I, I might have when I was putting those, those blogs together and stuff like that. Uh, and Dan is, uh, as I said, been with us for three years, a uh, great fellow to work with, and uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to Tableau. And I think I'll let him do the rest of the introduction because I don't want to eat into our time. So Dan, if you're all good with that, yep. take it away and uh, Great stuff. best of luck. Thank you, Thank you very much, Johnny. Uh, just a quick check. Can you see my uh, Tableau workbook there? 100%, yeah. Lovely face, yeah. So thanks, Johnny. That was a very kind introduction. Uh, and thanks, Siobhan, as well, for underselling yourself at the start. That was... Uh, Absolutely excellent. I've, I've learned a huge pile there. I will try and continue the quality of the tips uh, through my 15. Um, but luckily, we've got Lorna to, to finish out the session. Um, so if I disappoint, then Lorna can take over. So yeah, uh, Daniel Ling, uh, BI consultant with the Information Lab uh, for the last three years, um, using Tableau for a little bit longer than that. Uh, you can see my contact details here if you want to reach out on email, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, or if you want to go and steal some of my ideas from Tableau Public, uh, feel free. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we shall get cracking. Uh, so tip one is containers and not the shipping containers that everybody's uh, moaning about the price of um, quadrupling. Uh, it is Tableau containers. So this dashboard here um, and pretty much every, I'd say 99 point something percent of my dashboards will use containers. Uh, I don't like the tiled. I think the um, containers just give you much more flexibility and control and ability to um, kind of move stuff around and, and get stuff looking um, as slick as it can be. So on the sheet here, we've, we've a load of different charts with three bands, three bars, another bar and a scatter. Um, and you can see up at the top, I have uh, my bands and my kind of mini bars. I've, I've highlighted the, um, just double click on that fella. We can see this is a container itself uh, with the band and the bar in. And then that is again, sitting within another container. Double click there, we can see. And you can very quickly just distribute contents evenly to make them exactly the same size across. So there's none of that kind of dragging and does it look right? You know, get your ruler out on the screen. None of that stuff. We can we can let Tableau do some of the hard work and dividing by how however many um, views we have in the screen. Um, so to do that, uh, build. I always well typically start off with a vertical and we can drag that in. Um, and a little tip is when you're building a, a dashboard with with a load of sheets, I always drag a text box in to that first container and just type some gibberish in and drop another one in. 
when you're dropping the, the item into the container, we can see now we've got that kind of gray area and the dotted line, that's where it's gonna live. So I can now type, that's my lower section. And I can pop another one in for, let's say this is the bottom. So that just gives me kind of placeholders. I can then drag in, let's say a horizontal, and I know where that's gonna go. I can either pop it between those two, um, and then I can start adding my charts to that. So I'm gonna pop a bar chart and a map into here. So we can see that, again, the gray area down the right is, is where that's gonna drop in. Um, can do legend, thank you very much. And if I just click on the chart and double click on the little um, kind of button at the top, I can now see my container uh, highlighted and I can force these to be equally distributed just to get that kind of little bit of symmetry along there. And then drag that one down and then I can pop my line chart across the top. So just very simple uh, containers way to start. You can then delete your text boxes as you go. Um, very simple starters. Um, on to number two, you can change the format and tooltip from a dashboard. So I don't have to go into every single one and find the hidden sheet and et cetera, et cetera, and come in here to do formatting or tooltip changes. I can just click on a particular chart and worksheet and tooltip. So I can, well, that's not being shown at the moment, but I can format that. I can come in here and I can say, right, I want to format this worksheet, uh, format. And you now I can change the font here. And as we saw from, um, Siobhan's presentation, whatever is bold is not the default now. So we can see that the orange text has been changed. I don't have to take that additional step of go to worksheet and et cetera, et cetera. So I can reformat from the whole uh, dashboard. Uh, number three, as uh, Siobhan was presenting uh, on custom shapes, she has um, already kind of shown you how to, to add uh, custom shapes into your um, Tableau re repository, so that sits in uh, my documents. Within here, you've got your shapes. Um, and just within my uh, Tableau user group examples, I've created these lovely icons from PowerPoint. So for my three segments in Superstore, my consumer, corporate, and home office, I've gone for the consumer and a shopping basket, uh, corporate, you know, business style, and home office, um, as everybody's working from home now. Looks familiar. So we can add those in and we can then, as you've all touched upon the, the info icon, we can also add in um, those to our dashboards to um, take us a step further from just the drop down filter or the multi select filter. We can then use a shape to filter. So I have my lovely bar chart here by subcategory and colored by a segment. When I click on an image, I can filter the chart below. That just, just makes it a little bit more um, interesting. And to do such a thing, we can go uh, new worksheet. So if I drag in my segment onto detail, I can change my mark type to a shape. Within my shapes, I can put segment under shape. Uh, so now I have my three different segments as, as different uh, options. I can come down to my uh, shape palette. Uh, consumer is my trolley, corporate is my business person, and home office. You see, very small, make them a bit bigger, size. And then I can add segment to color as well. So when I come into a dashboard, a new dashboard, I can drop my uh, lovely filter or lovely uh, segment icons on. If I drag in a bar chart, for example, and then if I just click on users quick filter, as I click on my lovely icons, they change. So we see that a lot in clients we work with where they have maybe different departments. Is it food or beverage? Or is it, you know, in this example, is it which segment? We can then just make the dashboard a bit more interesting. It doesn't have to be a plain old drop down filter. Uh, preferences file examples is tip four. So again, when working in organizations or doing something on Tableau Public, if you don't want to use the, the Tableau standard uh, color palettes of which there is multiple and, and they're, they're very well, um, well populated, but we can actually um, go in and create our own uh, custom color palettes. So again, within um, my Tableau repository, this little file here uh, called preferences, you right click and you open with 
notepad. And it opens on your own screen, obviously. So I just dragged that in. It's a text file and it's it's just kind of this, this standard format. Um, there's a, kind of these tags, workbook preferences, and then the color palette. So you, you can download a lot of these uh, custom color palettes from uh, the internet. And you can just see within there, within the color, you've got the, the hex code of, of the individual colors. So you can add as many as you like. I've gone a bit crazy here with, with all the different ones. Um, but when I pop back to, to Tableau, for example, when I color, edit colors, you can see I've got a whole load of additional, you know, you get the, the kind of top up to about here within Tableau as a default. And then I've got all these lovely plasma different colors. So you can take your company uh, marketing branding guidelines and apply that to, to all your dashboards, make everything look uh, bang on trend and, and in, um, in brand guidelines. Uh, number five, copy and paste to Excel, because uh, everybody always seems to say, can we get that data in Excel, even though you've spent days and weeks and months building it in Tableau and making it interactive, there'll always be that, um, that idea. So literally click on the chart, copy into Excel and voila, paste, boom. Can be as complex as you like, that simple map, it brings through the latitude and the longitude, the state, country, region, and the sales, because that's what's, what's driving the chart there. So um, quick ones, if you need to kind of validate the data that's coming through into your Tableau viz, and you want to do a quick eyeball for you know, what were the sales in Alabama, you can quickly go and look that. Uh, number six, uh, because everybody loves a donut. Uh, donut charts are good for, I suppose, a uh, proportion of total. There's a few kind of guidelines around not using too many segments or nothing above 100% because it kind of can't go around twice. Um, but in, in certain use cases, a donut chart can be quite, um, quite useful. Uh, to build one, let's see here, I have a simple uh, reminder for myself. So the key is to type min and zero. So that basically gives you an axis with the zero on it. I'm going to duplicate that again. And now I have two. And I'm going to go entire view. And for my first one, I'm going to change that to a pie. Second one, I'm going to change that to pie as well. So now we have two circles looking very exciting so far. So then I can start to build up, um, build up the view. So in segment, I'm going to drop that to color. So now I can see on my um, left pill here, I now have the segments broken out and I can drop uh, sales onto the size for that one. So now it's, it's a kind of standard pie, but the, the trick is then to, to make one pie bigger, build that up. And then our other pie, which we're gonna overlay, uh, we change the color of that to white. Now it's gone, gonna format our lines, that. Borders. No, sorry, just taking all the grid lines and all that lovely fluff out of it. Uh, well, to do zero line. And when I then uh, dual axis that, voila, I have my donut because you basically have a pie chart with a, a white circle at the top. Uh, the key is the, the dual axis of the min zero, and hide that as well, show our header. And then we can add, maybe we want to add the total to the center. So our sales on the uh, pie that's on the top, we can drop the label in there. And that gives us our total. And then around the side, we can add our sales around there. So we've got our total in the middle and our various different three segments of the, the sales value there. Uh, number seven is swap and retain padding. So this is a great little, um, quick win for when you're rebuilding things or swapping things in and out of dashboards and you want to kind of retain the, the look and feel. Um, here I have two charts. Chart one is uh, with some padding. Chart two is without. Um, when you hover over your various different sheets that you can now add to the dashboard, um, you have this lovely little icon here, which is called swap sheets. So I can swap that in and that will retain the padding that I've specified for chart one here. So if I do the same with chart two, bring one back. Now number one has no padding because its predecessor didn't have any padding. That's kind of a two in one for the, 
little swap sheets button there. Really handy for when you have a load of dashboard or a load of sheets that you want to kind of try out and, and build things in. Uh, number eight is um, data refresh time. So if you're working with uh, a scheduled extract um, or something like that, you can put onto your dashboard a little indicator to say, this is when the data was last updated. Um, and you can then customize that with a bit of text in front of it. So to do that, you just come into a, a new sheet and you can do that within the sheet title. So when I double click on here, I can then edit this to the data was updated at, and then within this insert option, where we can insert kind of parameters to customize titles or um, page name, page number, we can do data update time, the second option here. And we can apply that. And at the moment, you'll see now it's unknown update time. So the trick is to just drop anything onto the filter and select use all. And that will now know that this is a data source that's being used. Go and tell me when it was last updated. As it's Superstore, it, it kind of works on the, the time you open it. But if that's a nightly refresh at five, six, seven in the morning, and you want to tell your users when, uh, when the data was last updated, you can just pop that in and they'll be able to see the, the kind of freshness of their data. Um, you can then just drag that in uh, 27, yeah. And there you get the, um, the sheet. You can obviously customize that to be small, out the way little footnote. Let's do that one. It's too small. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, so nine and 10 is a two for one, if I don't get one free. Um, another viz from Tableau Public, shameless uh, plug here, but um, this is one that's looking at uh, Premier League managers with over 300 games and their, their kind of win percent and uh, various number of games and, and that type of thing. Um, so the chart on the right is the first one we're going to be looking at with the, the right aligned title. So within the default titles, you can go left, center, or right, and it'll go kind of outside the chart. With this one, we're using a nice little tip here um, that I will build from scratch. So we drag our manager onto our rows, and we drag our win percent onto columns. So we've got our lovely bar, and let's sort that. Lovely stuff. So if I stick my label on, let's say, that's obviously right aligned, left, middle. Yeah, not great. Okay, so we can take that off. And again, if we just duplicate the, um, the measure, so I now have my two bars, change the first one to a bar because I want that to remain as a bar. And my second one, I'm gonna change that to a Gantt bar. Get this kind of lovely line that's uh, over to the same win percent. Uh, I can then drop my manager onto the label of that and left align that fella. And then dual axis again and make sure you synchronize and hide that, show header, show header. So now the, the label just sits inside of the um, inside of the end, kind of gives you a slightly different look um, to it kind of being off the right or in the middle or forced to the left. Uh, number 10 is uh, parameter actions, which are a wonderful addition to, to Tableau a couple of years ago. Um, so to build interactivity within the Viz, um, you know, this is great because it's showing Arsene Wenger for the Arsenal fans. You know, he's, the, um, he's got the most number of games. He's slightly behind um, Sir Alex in terms of win percentage. But you would be asking, well, how do I kind of, how do I interact and how do I look at somebody else? So I could hover over all of them. Or I can build in parameter actions that then say, well, based on a click, now update the other chart. So now we can see Jose Marino, or we can click on Sir Alex Ferguson, and the click updates the other charts. Um, and to do that, we can very quickly build uh, a parameter action. So down here on the left, you can see my param uh, manager parameter, which is basically uh, a parameter a string based on the manager name. It's very straightforward. Um, we can create our selected calculation. So who is the selected manager and who is obviously not. Uh, so again, that's a very simple calculation called selected, which is 
when the manager parameter equals the manager, then it's true. When it's not, it's false. And then we can use that, um, as you can see over on the right, as our, our true or false. To activate that onto our dashboard, in dashboard actions, uh, so again, I think this is a relatively new, um, new feature in Tableau that you can see your actions from the whole workbook or just the sheet, which is kind of handy when you've a load of dashboards um, on the go and there's filters and highlights and um, set actions and parameter actions all over the show. That's very handy to be able to, to show everything or just this sheet. So adding the parameter action, I can just step in here and edit this. So basically um, we can give it a name, update. Get a name there. Which source sheet is it? So it's which sheets again, similar to Siobhan's um, clear all filter, which sheets act as the source. So I want my games by win percentage, my bar chart here, my scatter rather in the, the lower left, and my win percentage um, to drive that. Do I want to do it on hover, select all menu? So if I change that to hover, we'll get a slightly different experience. Which target uh, parameter? So my manager parameter again select the, the relevant one here, and which field, so it's our manager field. And when we click that and apply, we've changed it slightly now, so it should work on the hover. So I can interact with that and I can get my, um, my viz to update, again, without having to have a big drop down or, or whatever it is. So I can kind of extend the, the functionality and, and kind of add that in there, okay? So that was nine and 10. So 11 is really straightforward. Uh, text boxes can contain hyperlinks. So just by typing in uh, the full HTTPS uh, colon slash slash, um, we can add a link in there and click on that. And again, on the other screen, voila, I've been taken to EVC and I can read about Barcelona's troubles at the moment. Um, again, good for um, where we may have intranet sites with additional information about the um, the data contained or the program that it relates to or, or whatever it may be, we can we can add links in here. You could link it out to your own LinkedIn or Twitter or, or whatever that may be. Um, number 12 is uh, lines to break up a dashboard. So if I start building my dashboard here, dragging a vertical and uh, let's do text boxes again, just to give us uh, placeholders. Uh, Dragging a horizontal between them, drag my bar, my map, Quick recap from tip one or two to distribute evenly. Get rid of that fella. And let's say our lovely line at the top. Okay, very good. So we've built our quick dashboard, but you see a lot of uh, dashboards on Tableau Public with kind of nice little uh, delineation and separation lines. So again, I can drag a blank in, I know where it's going to go copy here and it's just a black space good for uh, white space and readability but if i edit my height on that 10 and then i come to my layout tab over on the left i'm going to go background let's say black gives you just a little black line separates the two charts um, you can't go down to uh one because tableau will build in four um Four pixels of buffer all the way around. So to get that down to a one, I can come into my outer padding, just go zeros all around and edit the height of that one pixel. So that's a very thin line just, just underneath to, to separate the top from the bottom section. Do exactly the same between these two fellas here. Now so that's distributing evenly, take that off. So in there, and you can maybe make that a gray color in your background. So again, just a very simple tip to, to kind of break things up and, and um, you could even extend the padding on this to maybe 20 to, to really give it that, that break between the two charts or between the three charts. So, uh, number 13 is 100 people or however many people you like or 100 things or, or whatever it may be. Um, this is a chart from my uh, INVIS entry for last year, uh, and it was looking at postnatal depression. And, and I wanted a way of, of kind of showing the proportion of uh, 100 women that suffer from the baby blues, and there was additional um, kind of other, other breakdowns of that. Um, 
I saw this from a, a blog, I believe, from Lindsay Besenthal, who's in the, the Tableau community, very uh, active person in the, in the community. Um, and it's kind of this, this idea that, you know, all the blue dots are the, the 70 and then the white dots are, are the not, um, the other 30 within that 100. Um, and to make this in Tableau, there's this great website here. So again, I click on the link there and drag. Like that in here, there's this wonderful website, which, which I can share the link after. Basically gives you an X, Y coordinate for different um, points. You can change that uh, URL to be whatever number you like, and you'll get the, um, get the different number of points here. If I go back to 100, for example. So this might be, you know, percent of people or percent of whatever it is. Uh, you can, show your coordinates and you get this lovely um, 100 rows of, of an X and a Y coordinates. You can just paste that into Excel. Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, so there's a tiny bit of formatting you need to do to um, do, do uh, text to columns. You just basically uh, separate that out, but then you have an X and a Y. You can bring that into to Tableau as a data source. So you now have an X and a Y. You can then blend that onto your, your data source uh, or link it in Tableau Prep or, or however you like to do that. If I drag my X up to columns and my Y to rows, and then I have 100 dots uh, roughly, roughly in a circle. We can um, take off our headers here, take that off, and our, get rid of our lovely lines here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Clean it up a little bit, get the idea. Then you can kind of uh, create additional calculations to, to show you know, which one of these we can maybe make a circle, slightly bigger, you get the idea. Then we can drag that into our dashboard and just tidy that up with a high title format shading. So that's how you can kind of play around with, with different visualizations. Uh, number 14 is dashboard grid and options. So again, when you're kind of trying to line things up and, and make sure everything is, is looking well, little option within dashboard and show grid. So back to school with your graph paper and um, should be a good, good reminder for everybody. You can then see the little kind of grid lines behind. It doesn't get published up when you publish that up to Tableau server or online or public. Um, it's purely in the desktop and you can play around with the grid options to show you the different uh, thicknesses. So you can kind of line things up and make sure everything looks nice and um, symmetrical and lined up. Um, and then 15 is a tool tip. You can edit your tool tip again um, from the worksheet here, but I just learned this yesterday where if you just click in here, it kind of highlights your measure and you can um, format it there. You don't have to do that hideous grabbing and hovering. Just works for measures, doesn't work for text. Still have to hover over and grab that from there, but really nice um, quick little tip to, to kind of highlight those as different. So then obviously you wouldn't format it like that, but very simple way of, of updating the, the formatting of a measure within a tooltip. And that is me, in and out. Daniel, brilliant stuff. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And uh, let me just have a look at your runtime there uh, as we come into the final uh, part of the passing on of the baton, 11.37 to 12.03. So Lorna, you have a bit of catching up to do uh, to make it in time, but again, uh, top quality stuff there. Uh, just some comments uh, coming in, Dan. Um, is it recorded yet? Uh, absolutely. Um, so Lorna Brown, 2021.3 allows you to add custom sample workshop. That's from before, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, yes, Siobhan has freely admitted that she's going to steal a tip there, um, Dan. So that's fine. I can't, Siobhan, do you want to tell us which one it was that you're stealing? Uh, no, I, I I think I stole one of his tips for the the custom icons. I used a couple of them, and oh, did I you? Say, yeah, that's controversial, right? We 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 might have to talk about that in the post uh, post <laughs> in the in the green room afterwards. But that's all right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, Adam Byrne posted helpful guide on how to do this online. This is formatting, creating uh, creating custom colors. 
Um, I think we have, did we do a video on that as well in the past, Dan? Or was that with Rob Carroll? I can remember. Because that's on our YouTube channel anyway, um, somewhere. Uh, Ida O'Keefe, very positive person. Nice, she says. Uh, Adam Hall, love this. Uh, Katie, nice one, Dan. And uh, Arancha Oviedo. Uh, is saying brilliant and then follows that up by saying great thank you okay um so excellent feedback again kenneth o'shea very good i use a lot of containers and would also recommend naming your containers in the hierarchy if you use many containers in your dashboards this can be found in the lay layout section and it's a, it's a it's a good point indeed uh so that's great um yeah one or two updates i suppose before we we go on i don't have any other questions there um just to say uh that if uh uh if you're interested in other events uh, coming up you should keep an eye out obviously on our linkedin page uh as well and katie kilroy she might come back to us and tell us a little bit more about data plus women um that might be may or may not be coming up in october but again keep an eye out on katie's linkedin page and she gives information about that uh and that's great um so look without further ado what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to pass over to lorna quick introduction when we spoke um a couple of weeks ago we, i did an interview for the information lab uh, for our blog with lorna um to talk about the tableau desktop cookbook that she has just published uh, but we ended up talking about rugby league uh, for quite a long time actually and uh, that was a great conversation um lorna is a big rugby league fan uh, and I think I'll let you tell her more about it, but just to say, I think it feeds in, in, in on some level, at least, to uh, Lorna's journey towards Tableau. Um, so I, I might let her tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, my camera's still not working, which is probably lucky for everyone. I'll now go on mute and I'll hand it over to Lorna. Uh, take it away, Lorna, and, and bring it home quick. Thanks. Uh, so I look, looks like I have 10 minutes to try and get through all of these tips, but um, fingers crossed I can go as quickly as I can. Luckily, it's being recorded, so you can slow me down um, once you get the recording and then watch it back uh, to yeah. take some of these tips away. Don't worry. We still have until, just to let you know, we have until 12.30 until this okay. finishes. And so I think everybody's <laughs> enjoying it so much, they're not too worried about the time. Okay, I'll so, slow uh, it down a little bit Off then. we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, my name is Lana Brown. I am a Tableau Zen Master and Tableau Public Ambassador. Um, and as Johnny just said, um, I have wrote a book and it's available um, on Amazon or uh, various different websites to pre-order. Now it should be out by the end of the, this month. Um, so with, with that, I'm just going to go straight into um, some of my tips. So my first one is um, around the new relationships model. So let's just take a look at what that kind of looks like. So um, within the new data source pane, um, I haven't updated to 21.3 because just as I was about to do it, they took down the um, file to do that. So it might look slightly differently again when you come to 21.3, but right now we're just having a look at our targets data. So our orders table is as individual orders which have different days and different products in. Our monthly targets is at a monthly level. So if I just quickly show you this data for every subcategory, we have a month and we have a target. Now, previously, if we wanted to merge these two data sets together, we'd either have to join them, which would then lead to a complicated level of detail calculation to get back the correct target value, or we'd have to blend them and nobody really likes to talk about blends because we don't really want to do blending but with relationships um, what's great about these is you can have data that's at different levels of aggregation now tableau's automatically picked up the fact that this is subcategory but what we want to do here is we want to aggregate our orders table to be at the monthly level so what we can do is we can add in our date trunk function at the month level of order date, if my typing works out today. Um, so what this is doing here is we're saying um, we're, we're rolling up the order date to the monthly level, which then allows us to connect to our monthly targets value. And, and what happens here is we've created that relationship. And now when I go in here, what I can do on my right hand side is if I just drag and drop my targets to my top section, right click and synchronize and change this one to a Gantt bar. Oh, not what, uh, 
what has happened there um so something as oh it's because it's we're using average sales let me just change that to sum of sales so here we can see that we have our targets and we have our um actual values as well so we can tidy that up and change the colors but you can see there that i didn't need to do any lod calculations and it's now just picked up a specific value for my targets tip number one Tip number two is on the left hand side now, because we've used relationships, we now have a, um, depending on the way that you've set up your data source, so either group by folder or group by data source, is whether you have a dimensions and measures per table or per folder. Um, so what happens here is for every relationship that you create, you'll have a dimensions and a measures. So for our orders table, we have our dimensions. And this thin gray line differentiates between our uh, dimensions and our measures. And then we also have at the bottom here, our sort of what I like to call no man's land. And this no man's land is where um, you create calculations which can, um, which are dependent on what is in the view. So for example, if we're creating a profit ratio, a profit ratio would then be at the bottom because Tableau doesn't know at what level of aggregation it's going to be used at based on the fields that are in the view. So it just depends on where it's gonna sit as to what type of calculation you've created. Okay, tip number three. So we have our um, order date parameter here and that's fine in, in most senses, but um, if you want to use a parameter, but you only want to have the relevant dates in there, so we only want to see 2021 dates in our parameter. Without having to update this parameter manually, we want to be able to use our data to be able to bring that back. So let's start by creating a field. So um, we're going to say relevant month dates. So the first thing I did was I actually created a custom date. Um, and what this is, is if you right click on your odd date, you can create a custom date so that we only bring back the month's values. And what we're going to say here is if our year of order date equals the year of today, then give me back um, this date month's value. Else, um, you can either leave the else, else null or just leave it and wrap it up as an end. And what happens there is now when I drag that into my view, you'll see that if I actually make it exact date and then convert it to discrete, you'll see now that it's only ever picking up my um, first of the month or my 2021 dates. I can then use that within my parameter. So if I right click and edit, I can use the when workbook opens. So now I can select my relevant month's dates. And what happens here now is it only picks up my 2021 dates. So therefore it stops my end users going back further than I really want them to do on my actual values. Now, the other thing we can do within parameters is we can use a today calculation. So we can carry on using the date trunk that we did before, and we can use the date trunk of today. And now the reason why we might want to do that is because, again, inside our parameters, we have this option to select current value. And we can now select that today reference, which is then going to update if we roll into October. So, for example, whenever my workbook opens now, this is automatically going to default to the latest month or the month that we are in right now. If you don't want to use today and you want to use a max date, you could do that with LODs as well, so that it'll always bring back the maximum date within our data. Okay, can't remember what number that was, but let's keep going with this anyway. Um, so we have two parameters here, and sometimes when um, in dashboards, clients or customers want to be able to see um, a date range slider. So they'll have a slider for the, the date. And I like to use this new tip, which um, allows you to use parameter actions combined to be able to basically highlight a range. And then you can move forward with that range that you've selected using data that's behind it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add two reference lines, uh, a reference band, sorry. So we're going to use our start date 
and our end date. And we're just going to leave them there for now. So they're just date parameters, which you can select a date anywhere. And if we go up to worksheets and actions, um, you can see I already have my start and end date there. So let me just remove those. And I'm going to go to change parameter action. So um, this is currently doing it at the worksheet level, but we can also do it at the data source level or the dashboard level. But I'm going to select my start date choose my field, which is date. I'm going to choose the minimum aggregation there. Always name your actions. I'm going to replicate for the end date as well. So we're going to choose our end date, same field, but this time use maximum. So I'm just going to call this end. Now when I click OK and OK again, now when I, oh, no, move the, that title about, when I highlight over a section, it now updates my parameters on the right hand side. And that means I can then use that going forward in calculations to be able to um, only highlight those specific um, data points that's within that date range. And we're using Tableau's functionality to be able to use a slider within your workbooks. Now, oh, what has happened to my workbook? Why is my marks card over on the right hand side? Why is my filters up there? Someone has obviously come in and changed out all of my things that I'm used to. Like I couldn't work in this way. Maybe other people can, but I want to change them back to the default. So I'm going to go back to worksheets, show cards, and I'm going to set reset cards. And what that happens is then it moves everything back to, in my opinion, where it's supposed to be. <laughs> It might be um, that you might want to move things here. I know some people do move uh, rows to be on the right hand side, on the left, sorry, so that um, you understand where rows are and columns are compared to um, where they're visualizing on the worksheet itself. Oh, definitely don't want to undo that. Um, so it just depends on what it is you're trying to do. But let's go on to a, another uh, tip, which is a rounded bar chart. Now, I don't always recommend these, but sometimes they're more visually pleasing than just a bog standard bar chart. And the way that we can do this is we can use the average of zero. And what we're going to do here is going to use create a bar chart using a line chart. So I'm going to drag and drop my average of zero on top of my axes. So I get a shared axis. I'm going to change this to a line and I'm going to move my measure names to the path. I'm going to increase my size right up. I'm going to get rid of those markers at the end. And now we can add just the line ends. So now we have our values. Let me just, so there's a slight overlap there on, on some marks, but now we have a rounded bar chart um, on both sides of the axes. Again, just be careful with this because if you show the values, for example, that one there looks like it's above 50K when actually it's um, 48K. So I'd probably unshow the headers um, so that they're just using it as a reference guide rather than to show actuals on an axis. And to push that even further, you could also, if I drag measure values to color, you can create a gradiented line chart, bar chart as well. I don't recommend that, but just because you can do that. Um, next thing we want to show off is um, I want to be able to um, create a sort of like false highlight. Um, so whenever I create um, an action, so when I click on something, I don't want everything else to gray out in the background. Now there's several different ways that we can do this. Um, the first way is um, I'm just gonna create two dummy calculations. So this one's gonna be called dummy one. And the other one, I'm going to right click and duplicate and call this dummy two. And then both of those are going to get added to my marks card. Now, it doesn't look like it does anything right now, but if I go to my worksheets and actions, again, this can be done on a dashboard level or worksheet. If I just add a filter, now I'm going to select the sheet that I'm on and I'm going to use the selected fields option. And in here, we're going to say dummy normal one equals dummy copy. 
And we know that they're never going to equal each other. So therefore, it kind of cancels it out. So if I add that onto the select, click OK, OK again. And now whenever I select a bar, this actually doesn't change anything um, and it doesn't gray out the background. And the reason why I also wanted to show you this is because it should um, have updated my parameter, but obviously I deleted that parameter action. But it just allows you to show, um, to get rid of that graying out in the background. So hopefully Tableau do remove that in the long run. Now, some of the new things with um, Tableau Desktop is um, the ability to create quick LODs. Now, the reason why you might want to do a quick LOD is to try and get this average line back you either have to um, use a table calculation or a LOD. And I found using a quick LOD is quite simple. So what we want to do is we want to be able to create the sum of sales by subcategory. So I'm going to press uh, command or control on uh, command on Mac, control on Windows, and I'm going to hover over and go up to my subcategory. Oops. And this automatically creates an LOD. So if I just edit this, this has now created a fix at the subcategory level for sum of sales. Now to get the average for each category, I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the default aggregation to the average. I'm then going to press command or control and drop that on top of my category this time. So now I've created a nested level of detail, which is fixed at the category level. So if I add that to my view, what happens here is we get the value of our averages back onto the LOD value. This can be used then in calculations to show above or below the particular average. Um, one of the things, so if we're, if we're creating that calculation, so if I just do the difference of the sum of sales minus the, the actual LOD value, we get the value here, but maybe we just want to see uh, an up or down arrow for positive or negative. And to do that, we can use the sign function. So if I just type in sign of diff, what's going to happen here is that's going to give the difference either a one, a zero, or a minus one. So if I add that to color, change it to discrete, we now have either a minus one or a one. So that allows you to just showcase whether it's above or below zero um, by just using a simple sign function. Now, um, keeping going with this, um, set actions are a great, um, a, a new feature which I really, really like at the moment. So to create a set, we just right click in and creating a set for now. I'm just gonna click two of those and add that to color. Now, with set actions, if I go to worksheet and actions, we're going to add a set option. I'm going to change to subcategory set. And at the bottom, we have several different options that we can then add or remove from our set. So I'm going to use the add values to set on the menu. So I'm just going to call this add. And then I'm also going to create an option to remove as well. So here, what we can do is we can have the remove values on the menu. And now what happens is whenever I click on one, I can then add it or I can then remove it from my set. And it just allows you to have a little bit more control over what is in and out of your set to be able to compare back and forth. You also have the option to show set now, which is using the new set control features. So set control also allows you to look like a filter um, to be able to add members in or out of your set. Now I have two more things that I want to cover and that should take me up to the 15 because I know I had more than 15 prepared. Um, so Vision Tooltip Dashboard. So for now, what we can do is let's say we wanted to add in our worksheet into our dash into our view. So I'm going to add in, I'm going to change this to 600 by uh, oops, 600. Okay, so now when I hover over my view, I can see the subcategory level of sales within my dashboard itself. Um, so this then 
allows you to dig into a little bit deeper by using the vision tooltips. But what happens if I also want to see a trend over time and a dot plot and some other bits and bobs? We can create a dashboard-ish inside the um, Biz and Tooltip. So I'm just going to create, add in sheet number three. I'm going to press backspace. And then I'm going to also add in oops, sheet number four. So here we have two side by side. So if I click OK, now when I hover over, you'll see that we have three Biz and Tooltips stacked near each other. To finish this off, um, I've got two worksheets, um, one which has the uh, row dividers and one which has the column dividers. So I'm going to add that into, so I'm going to add my column, my row one in here. So that is sheet number five. And I'm going to change the, the maximum width to be 600 and the max height to be nine. Get rid of that in between. And then between the two sheets again, I'm going to add in dash number six, change the um, width this time to be nine and delete that backspace there. Click OK. And now when I hover over, I clearly didn't quite get that right. Um, so three, six and four. Um, so we actually want this to be 609 and this one also to be 609. So now when I hover over, you can see we've got the divider lines in between our worksheets inside the Vis and Tooltip. So there's just some options to be able to up your Vis and Tooltips. Again, just be aware of accessibility. Um, if you're um, trying to print this off, obviously there is no way that you're gonna be able to show a Vis and Tooltip for all of your individual actions to hover over. Now, one of the cool things about um, one of the new features is the ability to show and hide containers. So previously, what you were able to do is float a container and add the show hide button. Now that is great because I can now show and hide my filters options. But with one of the latest versions, I now don't have to float my options. So if I click on my container and add the show hide button, I can now show and hide my container but it's going to collapse the whole container and make more space on my dashboard. So it just adds a little bit more context to, um, uh, uh, to allow the user to get rid of it or add it back in, depending on what it is that they're trying to show. And I think I'm going to leave it there because this next one takes a little bit longer, but if you are going to TC, hopefully you'll see some more tips um, as Anne, Heidi and myself are also doing some more tips for TC. So you'll have another 25 minute session of some extra tips and tricks there. Brilliant Thank stuff, you. Lorna. Thank you very much. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. The reaction has been great. Uh, wow, didn't know about quick uh, LODs. That's very cool. Uh, that's from Katie. And uh, somebody else came in then said, I need LODs in my life. Uh, somebody's asking, is this workbook available for download? Um, I can send it over to, to you, Johnny, and then you can send it out with your emails afterwards. I'll put yeah, it on absolutely. The and uh, if you have any other requests, do email me at johnny.butler at the information lab .ie. Um, I can put that in there uh, as well. And are all these tips in your new? Oh, yeah. That's a um, good question. Uh, uh, column two <laughs> is asking, are all these tips in your new book? Chance for a plug, Lorna. Take it. <laughs> I think most of them are, yes, um, but obviously I go through them in a lot more detail of being able to how to set them up from start to finish rather than just showcasing um, quickly how to do them. Brilliant. OK, Keith Drummond, uh, great stuff, Lorna. Thank you. Great tips from Daniel and Siobhan earlier, too. So thank you all. And thank you, Johnny for setting it up. Thank you very much, Keith, for uh, thanking me. Uh, that's brilliant. And uh, look, I don't think I have anything else to say, really, uh, because I know you're probably anxious to get your, your lunch and we're going to try and end it at, at, at uh, 12.30. A couple of things, though, uh, if I can, just in the chat there, I did uh, send a link to the Information Lab Ireland's 
um, website and uh, you know we have a few announcements as well that we 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 have about events and other things coming up so if you want to come on to our mailing list as well we'd really appreciate it and uh, you'll catch up with some good news we promise we won't bombard you also i just put a request in there to katie uh, if you were able to katie put the link to data plus women on that page or that events page or whatever fire it into the chat there hash gore uh, is is well I'll let him come in um, you're, he, unfortunately Pashkur you're a little bit late we're, we're, we're ending it now uh, but the recording will be available soon um, so Katie hopefully uh, I got, got that across there to you and also two other things we're always looking for speakers so please don't hesitate to get in touch if you have something to say uh, and if you feel that your organization is using Tableau in, in a, a way that's different or groundbreaking uh, in your particular field. Um, you know, we all, when we're doing this in Ireland, we often try and go along um, themes. We do theme-based ideas. So we've had health, we've had finance, we had sport before. Uh, I wanted to do one on veterinary uh, soon. So if anybody has any ideas for that, uh, please let us know. Um, and that'd be great. Louise Shorten's coming in there saying great tips. Thanks everyone. Hiya Louise, oh, we hope you're well. We're looking forward to having you back soon. And uh, Paul Duan uh, also says great tips. Thanks everyone. Um, and I think to be honest with you, unless, unless I've forgotten something, that is it for me. Does anybody else want to pitch in? Any of our, our contributors pitch in and say something before we forget? Dan? Oh, I was going to say great tips from everyone. Um, I learned something new from both Siobhan and Daniel. So great job. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Katie. Yeah, yeah. I'll, just, I'll second that. Great job to the to other guys, to Siobhan, to Lana, and Dan. Thanks for all your sharing your knowledge. Um, I just want to mention about the data plus women. So we're scheduled tentatively for the 7th of October. Uh, we don't have the link just yet live. But okay. I put that in the chat just in case people didn't see it. Um, so yeah, tentatively in uh, three weeks time, 7th of October. Great. Okay. And uh, the results of the poll, by the way, uh, everybody voted. For, 42 people voted. So that was really good. And so the results of the poll. Uh, the question was, would you like to come back to face-to-face -to -face Tableau user groups? I can feel the tension in the room. The results were to, yes, we want pizza, 21%. Would love to have a hybrid option, which, of course, is the most awkward one. Everybody went for that, uh, 55%. And then, no, I'm happy on my couch, is 24%. So it seems to be, you know, there's not too many people who, are, who, who really want to come back at this stage anyway and come in for, for, for pizza and that kind of thing. It's only, you know, a fifth of the respondents. Um, so, you know, we, we might have to look at, uh, although how many of the hybrid options would, would, would actually come in is, 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 is to be questioned as well, always examining the data. Um, so look, we'll have a look into it. It's great to have your feedback and uh, we'll discuss it and, and, and see how we get on. Uh, and, and somehow we, we might come up with a happy medium. Um, Dan, what did you want to say? Sorry. Sorry, put me on the spot. No, just thank you to, to yourself for hosting and to Siobhan and Lorna. Great tips. We learned a, a huge part of this. That's really good. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. And last word to the person who started it all, Siobhan. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, uh, same. Thanks so much to Lorna and, and Dan for um for being our guests. And I as always, I will always learn from you guys because you guys are like my role models, and I'm hopefully gonna be somewhere near close, maybe not as close to you guys, but you know getting there <laughs> but I think uh, yeah we all know that you're really not that far away at all to be honest with you <laughs> so uh, that's brilliant look i'm going to I, I i could let everybody talk for ages and maybe i i could talk for hours myself and i kind of get excited but unfortunately uh, at this stage all good things must come to an end and at this point i think we're going to leave it there for now the session has been recorded so um if you've attended uh, you'll get a follow-up email and a link to it um and uh it's all good and as i said if you want to contribute in the future send me an email johnny.butler at the information lab.ie and we can chat about that okay guys for now i'm going to say see you later and uh, hope that you enjoyed the event we'll see you at the next one which is going to be early in november i knew there was something else i had to say we have the next one lined up uh, for early in november we've already got a speaker uh david okanaja from deutsche bank is going to be uh, one of our guests at that. So keep an eye out for it and uh, we're looking forward to it. Okay, all the best. Thanks to everybody who contributed and who came along. Lorna, Daniel, Siobhan, Katie, and to Tiffany, who's not here, uh, is in back in Salesforce Tableau land, uh, but who was, a, who was a great help in setting this up as well.
Okay, adios, Arancha Oviedo. Uh, see you in November. Thank you very much. Bye. Take care, guys. I'll be the last to leave, so you can go out. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. See you. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.